Hey fellow PCPs, I'm Dr. Jason Singh, and this is the second of a five-part CE certified TikTok activity on anemia and LRMDS from MLI. Now, if you missed the first video by Jennifer Cottle, please check it out at your earliest convenience. Now, as a PCP, you can have a major influence on the well-being and quality of life for your patients with LRMDS. It all has to do with how you manage their anemia, okay? So let's learn more about how treatment decisions are guided by this really important point. Although LRMDS is rare, with an annual age-adjusted incidence in the U.S. of approximately 4 out of 100,000, that equates to about 16,000 uh, 16, new cases per year, approximately one-third of these patients will eventually progress to acute myeloid leukemia or AML. This number increases with age, with the median age of 70 for the onset of MDS. Now, despite the availability of MDS-specific treatments and an increased use of allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, the overall five-year survival probably remains around 31%. The etiology of MDS in, is unknown in most cases, but people with Down syndrome, Fanconi's anemia, and neurofibromatosis are at an increased risk. Secondary causes of MDS include exposure to chemotherapy and radiotherapy, which is often associated with the worst prognosis. Now, as a PCP, it's really important that we perform testing to determine blood cell count for patients with anemia. A very low cell count should be alarming and prompt us to think, hey, we, we need to further work this up or consider working closely with a hematologist. Mismanaged care of anemia can further complicate the challenges of treating anemia in patients with MDS. Now, while some patients with low-risk MDS and anemia can be managed with uh, supportive therapy alone, which may include red blood cell transfusions, the, the goal is really for patients to achieve transfusion independence, okay? And uh, chronic anemia requires repeated transfusions. Now, with repeated transfusions, that carries a risk of iron overload and sensitization that leads to hemolysis and loss of venous axis. This can then result in organ damage that can negatively impact the quality of life for our patients. The need for frequent transfusions may also signal worsening disease. And it's a progression from low risk to high risk, which is an indication for therapeutic intervention. Recommendations for the management of MDS are provided in guidelines prepared by specialty societies. And choosing the appropriate therapy should be done in collaboration with the hematologist. Now, the, the choice of treatment may also depend on factors such as serum, EPO levels, cytogenetics, and prior therapies. First-line treatment options include erythropoiesis-stimulating uh, agents, or ESAs, such as epoatin alpha. ESAs are commonly used in LRMDS and result in about 30 to 60% response rates, but unfortunately, response is often of limited duration. Here's where therapies such as lenalidomide and loose bitercept uh, are another sort of novel options in anemia in MDS come into play, such as immune checkpoint inhibitors, drugs that restore T cells and adaptive and innate immunity, and drugs that uh, target intracellular pathways. We'll talk more about all this, uh, including efficacy and safety of these exciting treatments in video four.